As we know, Jesus used many different methods of teaching. Today we listen to his perhaps most common form of teaching, which was to use parables. And I suspect that in all of the parables that Jesus has told, and many of us could repeat all of them from memory, this parable today is maybe the most perplexing as it rubs against our very notions of justice and fairness. How could someone who showed up for work at the crack of dawn get the same pay as somebody who showed up 10 minutes before closing? It just doesn't seem right. And if you feel yourself reacting that way, that means the parable is working because parables were intended to bring us into a deeper meaning of what the Lord is trying to convey. He's trying to hook our attention to try to figure out how is it that this seemingly situation of unfairness is okay, not only okay, but acceptable on all levels. Seems to me that this parable has nothing to do with compensation. Uh, it's not a critique on the economy or political or economic systems. This is a parable about faith, about the gift of faith. And it opens our eyes to the facts that God's sense of justice and mercy is very different than the humored standards of justice and mercy. You know, Jesus lived at a time in which there were tensions all around him that oddly enough, are very similar to the tensions that we often face in this day and age. There's this reality of human nature that gets manifested oftentimes in religion of uh, constantly judging others, their intentions. Uh, there can be these divisions in which certain people think they're more Catholic than somebody else. Um, there can be a dismissive attitude towards some who we might feel are going in the wrong direction or whose convictions rub us the wrong way. In this parable, Jesus says that the God of life oversees a large field, which is the earth. And he doesn't care when you find your way into the kingdom. He just wants to make sure you find your way. And whether from the first moments of life you're on the road of observance of religious values and traditions, or you have a deathbed conversion, you're welcome into the kingdom, every one of us. And he's inviting us not so much to worry about who's more faithful, who's more observant, who's more righteous. Why don't I think about myself and how am I stacking up in my spiritual life? How am I growing closer to Christ? How well can I resist the temptation to judge others, to criticize others, to dismiss others who I don't think are as faithful as me or as faithful as they ought to be? In the kingdom, the Lord makes no distinctions. You know, if we could see heaven like a ballpark, you know, there are no box seats in heaven. There's no coveted seats behind home plate. There isn't a difference between the bleachers and the Bob Euchre seats on the upper deck. Every one of us stand together before the Lord as brothers and sisters. All of us have our own journey of uh, accomplishments and failures. We all carry certain burdens over the course of living in which we regret certain choices we made or circumstances that impacted us. But in the end, the Lord welcomes all of us. He's so grateful no matter what happened that here we are receiving the love of God's promise and mercy that we could look back and see moments when we tried to be more merciful and kind in the choices that we made, less willing to judge others but to see one another as brothers and sisters before the Lord. These parables are extraordinary devices that the Lord employed some of them were more obvious than others. Some we might feel at first glance really speak to us. And others really cause us to think, to reflect on who am I trying to be? What kind of church am I trying to be part of and creating? This parable invites us to walk together in the journey of faith. Thank you for joining us for this celebration of the Mass, this virtual Mass 
is broadcast to hundreds of people every day of the week. You know, over 100 years ago, the very first celebrations of the Mass took place on the second floor of the Glenview Public House. It's been inconceivable that 100 years later, we would be reaching so many people all over the world through this technology. You're right, if you'd like right, to support yeah. the ongoing Not broadcasts the of OLPH's masses, please go to our website, go to Give Central, okay. and you'd be able to support the ongoing yeah. outreach you know, you know, of this virtual so ministry. Thank you for your support. Most of all, thank you for joining us in prayer. God bless you.